So the, so the hurricane season is basically officially between June 1st and uh, end of October. St. Martin over towards St. Bart's, Seba, St. Kitts and Nevis. W górę, tam się kręci w tą stronę. Jest trzecia kategoria. One of the most popular questions you ask us is what do we do when the storm comes? Aren't we afraid? Today we'll talk about exactly that part of our life aboard. What do we do when a hurricane is coming? Good morning, guys. Good morning. Welcome from St. Martin. Uh, St. Martin is probably one of the most northern, it's like the most northern, uh, northeasterly corner of the Caribbean. Uh, so having said that, we're, we're uh, for those of you who don't know, we're kind of in the crosshair of uh, hurricane paths. And the hurricane season officially started in the beginning of the season. Uh, our so normal- First June. Yeah, first June, June 1st, yes. Yeah. Our normal tactics, uh, if we're on board, is if we stay in the Caribbean, we just basically uh, watch the weather the whole time. And if there's anything suspicious showing up on the horizon, we just head south, way south, uh, to be safe. Um, if we don't stay on a boat, we simply take the boat somewhere completely outside of the hurricane zone. So that's our tactics. So uh, the first option, unfortunately, is just materializing now. Yeah. Uh, the tropical storm named uh, Brett, Brett started spinning day before yesterday. It got its name yesterday, so it became our daily bread. <laughs> Since yesterday, we've been well, we've been watching it for for quite a while, but now it's uh, actually became uh, uh, an actual um, danger uh, to us, uh, especially that at some point it may become a hurricane. Uh, for the time being, it's just showing cut one, uh, but. Even even a tropical storm for us sitting on the anchor is no fun, and hurricane for sure is no fun, and it's basically flat out dangerous. This is the place where the center is right now. Uh, those are predicted uh, positions of the center, and the cone is showing a possibility of it going left and right, which means in this case north and south, and at least the official version, which is based on quite a few models, is showing on average that it's, it's gonna be somewhere in between uh, Guadeloupe and uh, St. Vincent. So technically we should be safe in St. Martin here because we're quite far north, right? But the problem is that any uh, system that is already spinning spins uh, anti-clockwise. And that means that the prevailing winds from the east are adding on the north side of the system and subtracting on the south side of the system. So this is the safe side, this is the dangerous side. The difference between the winds here and here could be 50 knots, easily. Um, uh, so, uh, if we were to stay on the north side, we have to be way far and be pretty sure that this thing is going to pass like at least 100, 150 miles south of us, right? If it's going to pass somewhere close here and then turns right, then we have a problem because we're quite close to the center on the wrong side of it. And I will show you what the predictions are for that. And that is a prediction from this morning. And everything is showing it passing somewhere, like I said, between, uh, basically right now it's showing between Dominica and uh, San Vincent or San Lucia. So it's even more narrowed down, right? But there is this one model, this one, it's American model, uh, and it's showing it going slower and more north and actually strengthening uh, to the point of hurricane and in fact, this is the only one that's showing it uh, a possibility of it uh, reaching category three, category four actually, so 110 knots, which is obviously we wouldn't want to be anywhere near this. Um, so even though everything is looking good, that one model is completely wrecking our nerves. And 
to add to the confusion, because this would be a clear indication of, well, let's just hop on, a, on board and go south, right? And go as far south as possible, right? That's the usual, normal, uh, safest way to go. Um, aside from being lazy, that we don't feel like driving 200 miles right now. We just, came from, the Bahamas. We just came from the Bahamas. Just came from Obviously, miles. that completely aside. <laughs> Um, we're uh, considering the fact that obviously there's always some small risk of it turning south, uh, of it uh, accelerating, and the fact that we could possibly on our way south, we could, we could get some, we could get intercepted by some strong winds if we were to be late, right? Instead of arriving here, there you go, there's the boat, on time in Grenada. Let's say we're late half a day and we get this over here, right? Or a day. Uh, we, there's also no certainty what time it's going to arrive. I'm just working with the most uh, uh, pessimistic model right now. Um, so I'm looking at this guy and he uh, and it changed the la in the last six hours. That prediction went from path going through here and here to path going through here and here. This is, of course, no uh, guarantee to be safe right here in St. Martin. But the, the trend is that it's going away from us, not uh, towards us. So this is adding to the confusion because it, it makes our clear strategy of going south not necessarily so smart. Uh, so we gave ourselves right now basically, what, six hours, give or take, maximum, maximum. because that window to go south is going to close if we leave this is uh tuesday today tuesday the 20th if we leave around uh, 3 p.m uh we can safely arrive on thursday morning in grenada right here and be way ahead of any model right here right here right here right here those are all the models and they're all showing arrival of bad winds after we arrive in Grenada. That leaves us another six hours, give or take six hours, before things get really bad around here. And around here, it's not so bad, right? We're talking about gusts here. The actual wind is actually lower, right? Right around here. But we do care about gusts. That's why I'm looking always at the most conservative option, right? So it looks pretty, uh, I wouldn't say bleak, black. <laughs> And actually, there's some gray areas which are pretty much death zone right here because that's over 50 knots. That's pretty terrible. Um, so having said that, uh, to this this afternoon seems like the last option for us to execute the escape option because after that we're staying up north and basically praying for the damn thing not to turn north. That's the only thing. Honey, what do you feel? Mm -hmm. Kicking your woman's instincts. You don't feel like sailing, but you don't feel like I staying don't feel here like either. I don't feel like sailing at all, you know, yeah. because we just came from the Bahamas and we were been alone on the boat, only with kids, and it was really tough uh, conditions for us. But, now we, have, but now we have adult friends on the boat, they so it should be easier. But they haven't been uh, at sea. <laughs> but they're smart, we can teach them. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, you know, changing your plans is always like a going up from the comfort zone. <laughs> of course. Of because course. we are supposed to go to Guadeloupe and then Dominica and like I slowly getting south, not so not in a rush, but Grenada is also a good plan. All right. I don't know. I'm afraid that the weather is going to change on the way and we're going to catch bad wind on the way. You know, mm -hmm. that's the problem. And uh, maybe there's a, some, a possibility that uh, it's going to be, it's going to go more south and then touches Grenada, but Grenada. But then I we can, o the, then we can always run more south. That's an option. Yeah. 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 And then soon enough after Grenada, we were basically outside of the hurricane zone completely. So we. So. Yeah, so we're still in a progress of <laughs> the decisions. Uh, decision making. On the table. So <laughs> all the options are on the yeah. table. We'll uh, give you guys an update yeah. in a few hours. And then hopefully it will be, well, our mind will be made up. And hopefully that will be the safest option to go. Mm -hmm. All right. So the boat is ready. We are quite ready because Paul is ready. And maybe we don't, we're going to do a little provisioning. Um, so 
paperwork and then paper, we can go. Paperwork and things that we can leave within four hours yeah, maximum. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so. in this case, if we if we do choose to go, to to the go. earlier the better. Yeah. The more the more safety bracket we have, mm -hmm. the more padding. Okay. So that's the option. All right. Probably we'll go, but you will see. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see. For now, we're working with the option that we're going so that we're ready in case if we want to pull the trigger. So, mm. all right. Yeah. We'll see you soon. So we came here yesterday uh, from Dominican Republic and uh, uh, we knew that we're not going to see a uh, pretty beach and uh, uh, hotels and whatnot, but uh, what we've seen was quite uh, devastating. Uh, the, the houses are, are gone, some of them, I mean, the roofs definitely are gone, and uh, the boats flipped over on the, on the side of the road, like you see uh, uh, behind us. We have Fritz here. Uh, he's our uh, local friend. He's uh, lived in St. Martin for many, many years, even though he's uh, originally from Holland. Um, he's also a local doctor, so he's been here on the scene and uh, just a few days after the hurricane. There was a lot of rain. The first no roofs, of course. The house in Should we stay or should we go? We haven't made the decision yet, but we still have to do the shopping whether we go or not. Regardless of whether we stay in St. Martin or go to Grenada, I also have to replace the exhaust pipe. So here we go. Four, four hours later, we get the new forecast. Uh, we looked at it, everything moved south again, including the outlier um, model that was showing Cat 3 uh, going close, uh, you know, kind of turning north and going close by here and uh, close to Sam Martin. So we're feeling fairly confident that this is probably going to be the safest course of action just to stay uh, without risking uh, meeting anything uh, mid-ocean yeah. in case if something breaks or whatever. Because under normal circumstances we can easily cover that distance and be there w still with some uh, safety margin. But you know, if there is no need to do that, um, we'd rather stay. So this is what's going to happen and uh, we'll uh, see in two days what's uh, what transpires in reality. <laughs> Good morning. This is so here. Ah, that's smart. Mmm, yum yum. Co mamy tutaj? Wow, ale imprezka. Imprezka melonkowa, arbuzkowa. But it's my turn. No. I don't love it. Yes? No, I don't. I'm going to get a um, spoon. Spoon? There is a spoon. There you go. You did this. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Love and lie with you. I want to build a home. I 
first moon it is playing in the car. Hello, good morning. So next day, so next day we are happy that we decided to stay. It wasn't a really easy decision because uh, we were between two options. Uh, so we stayed in St. Martin and the very next day we got another weather update. And honey, do you have news? So our uh, idea about staying here was basically confirmed as a good one because the, uh, the only outlier model that was showing this crazy scenario that they would uh, um, increase in force to category three hurricane actually pass uh, close by here uh, uh, turned out to be not true. And all the other models, which there is more than 10 of them, uh, were showing that it's gonna pass somewhere around Martinique, San Lucia, uh, that vicinity, and it is doing exactly that. So we're happy that we stayed, that we didn't risk it because, you know, technically we had enough time, we could get down to Grenada and hide, uh, but, uh, you know, you, you never know, this is sailing. So if, if something happens on the way and we slow down and we only had about six to 12 hours uh, spare time to, uh, um, to go, if we would slow down to like half of our speed, then it could have been a problem. So that was the risk we would, t we would have taken if we have gone done if we have gone south mm. but we haven't we stayed here and it's looking good yeah and we are keeping our fingers crossed for all our friends who are in, at the moment in saint lucia uh, some of our friends already already left, left martinique and heading south to the grenadines uh, it looks much much safer over there and yeah so and i'm happy we didn't sail because so am I. i'm <laughs> I was definitely lazy, having like a two days at sea after we didn't recover from uh, sailing from Bahamas to St. Martin. It really, maybe not really tough conditions, but yeah. there were only two of us and kids. So just Oops. imagine seven days at sea uh, with, with one break, but having watches only between, between you and me. Between the two of us, yes. So it was really hard <laughs> and then upwind. And the poly, poly is amazing, but mm. <laughs> but it was a little bit choppy. It was choppy a little bit. It was choppy a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, at some point we had 25 knots on the nose, so you can imagine you it know, was a bit choppy. We, you know that we lost, first time we lost some glasses, the wine glasses. So yes. Yeah. So. Maybe it's not a big loss because we didn't drink a lot, but a few times a year when we have friends or so, but we lost three glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys. Hello. Day after. <laughs> so yes, our um, predictions were uh, have materialized. Uh, the only one outlying model um, from the American uh, Meteo Institute did not materialize, thank God, because it was the only one that totally wrecked our nerves because it was showing Cat 3 uh, hurricane basically 100 miles from us. On the, and we would be on the wrong side of it, on the north side of it, and that did not materialize. Every other model was showing the whole thing going down south and weakening, and in fact it has never reached a hurricane force, although we have some reports from our friends who are local mm. that are indicating that there were actually gusts up to about 70 knots. So it was nevertheless quite uh, uh, frightening and, and, uh, and dangerous, so it was no joke. Uh, but it wasn't catastrophic in any way, uh, from uh, what I'm understanding right now. Um, and we were completely safe here up north. We were 300 miles away from the, from the center, so effectively there was absolutely no difference in weather over here other than a slight shift in wind. Uh, but we have no clouds, no rain, um, no, um, no um, big uptick in, in wind uh, beyond normal trade winds. So, yeah, so we're happy. It's <laughs> big uh, weight off the shoulders. Mm. Uh, we weren't really keen on, on going down south because we were fresh after after coming from Bahamas, just the two of us, uh, 1,000 miles, you know, um, going upwind. 
it kind of kicks butt a bit. So we were a bit tired and we didn't feel yeah. like sailing, even though it looked like a very comfortable sailing because it would be a broad reach to reach um, um, for just two days, you know, with our friends aboard. So it would have been easier with watches to share. But nevertheless, it was nice to be able to stay and, uh, and not even take up that slight risk of, um, of uh, being intercepted by the hurricane uh, mid-sea because obviously when you're doing the last minute escape uh, that crosses its path, you have to take into account the possibility of breaking down, something breaking down on the way and, and taking a hit on the speed and, um, and then you could be closer than you wanted to. Uh, to the yeah. system, so yeah. so there was obviously some slight risk of that. Uh, so yeah, so we're happy. Yeah. And um, yeah, Bahamas. I know some of you may be like, "What are you talking about? You Bahamas? There were no Bahamas yet." Yeah, this is a special edition. Special meaning that we're publishing it literally days after uh, after the situation has occurred, and after, days after we recorded it. Uh, so the next episodes are going to be basically coming back and showing you stuff that we haven't shown you yet since we left uh, Poland last uh, fall. And uh, yes, the boat tour, the new boat tour is coming up. We'll show you all the details of things that we've changed. Um, but we'll also show you a really crazy sailing across the North Sea, Baltic Sea and uh, uh, Biscay Bay and in the yeah, in North, Northern Atlantic, basically in the winter, mm -hmm. which is a bit insane. Courageous and stupid. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a fine line between courageous and stupid. Yeah, pretty much. On the way. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the hurricane season is basically officially between June first and uh, end of October, give or take. Um, that doesn't guarantee 100% that there is nothing outside of it, obviously, but uh, there was one hurricane, I think, a few years ago in the middle of January, which basically everybody was like, what the heck? But in general, no. In, uh, in, in general, 99% of the time, it's only between June and uh, October, and only between, in the Western Atlantic, between about 10 degrees north and 30 degrees north. Uh, so basically entire Caribbean, Bahamas, and a bit of... Uh, um, east uh, coast of US is uh, subject to it. Uh, so there are a few ways that we have been either hiding or escaping the uh, the hurricane zone during the hurricane season in, the, in our last eight years aboard. Uh, right? Eight years. Yes. Jeez. Um, we went to New York twice, we went to Suriname, to South America uh, twice. Uh, once we actually stayed in the hurricane zone, that was the only time that our, our insurance agreed to insure the boat during the hurricane season because we presented a hurricane plan for the marina in Dominican Republic where we left the boat. And in the end, uh, when the second hurricane was approaching in 2017, after the first one uh, wreaked havoc across the Caribbean, uh, I jumped and uh, and uh, flew down to the to the boat, prepared it to sail away, and stayed only when I knew that the the center of the hurricane is going to pass about 100 miles north on the safe side of us, uh, which still produced almost 80 knot winds at one point, uh, but we were in a safe place and nothing really happened. But uh, yeah, the preparations were pretty crazy. I've I've had it uh, really well secured and uh, I scouted the area to make sure that there's nothing that can damage it when it goes flying and that kind of stuff. So in the end, it was fine. Unfortunately, I don't have a GoPro, so I can't go out with a camera outside, but uh, I'm gonna go, let's see, over there. And place another cleat, another line uh, to uh, go stern over here and to the other stern over there. And that's a really crazy line. It's an 18 ton uh, carbon line. So if that goes, we got a bigger problem. <laughs> These are the lines I was just talking about. Really crazy one. This, uh, the black one is a polyester, so it's not that strong. But, uh, but the blue one is only 13 millimeters, but it's pure carbon and it's uh, 18 metric tons. So everything else is going to break before this breaks. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I guess the floating garbage is starting to appear and there's some uh, diesel all around us. Not good, but I guess it got pushed from somewhere by the wind. So anyway, I guess I'm going to have to look out for, for different floating things and try to push them away from the boat. 
Yeah, so, and I think during the COVID was the first time that we actually stayed aboard in the hurricane zone, in the hurricane season, uh, staying in the Southern Caribbean. Uh, so the, it's an, kind of an easy strategy because if anything shows up on the horizon and you know a few days ahead, um, then you basically run even more south. And if it still looks dangerous, you run even more south as to the point to exit the hurricane zone completely. And to my knowledge, there was no record of a hurricane ever reaching south uh, Suriname. So uh, I think we're safe over there. Um, so yeah, so you can run as far as as far as south uh, as Suriname, and if need be, we can still run even more south. So the idea is that mm -hmm. if we do stay on board, we can kind of uh, uh, play it by ear, and and we don't really take unnecessary risk uh, by uh, staying in the in the Caribbean uh, to be to be uh, 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 to put the boat in danger. So that's pretty much it for uh, for hurricane strategies and this time this time we did something completely uh, different you know uh, we waited until the moment where where it was uh, uh, decision time to whether we can still escape and go south and cross the projected path uh, or do we stay up north are we do we have a certainty to uh, that the uh, that the eye is going to go way down south so that we are actually safe over here and that worked out I usually don't like to do that because that leaves you no options if the thing turns north. But there was absolutely no indication other than that one freaky model that, that was wrecking our nerves uh, that would do that. So we're good this time. <laughs> so now we can continue south and stay there for the rest of the hurricane season uh, in peace, hopefully. Right, honey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, did I say it's a special edition? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thank Cheers. Thank you for today. Thank See you, you next time. Berlin still sleeping. Clouds on the ceiling, we are roll the naked streets. The old Turkish fellows, they are smoking their tobacco. And oh, what a perfume it brings! The first rays of sun appear over the building. Going to the water to watch diamonds dancing and gaze at the trees. Gone in a midnight dust. My brain wants to leave. 